Hello and welcome back to the next episode in our Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord campaign playing as Arthur Pendragon, the Vlandian adventurer. <clears throat> Last episode we came back to Vlandia, traded more goods, built up our party, finished the, uh, the first quest to get our clan tier up to level 1. We did that by hiring some companions, which was the last requirement we uh, we had actually to, to complete that quest. Or Gunda and Gudra gave them some uh, some armor as well, which we spent a bit of our money on, and uh, and then met up with Radigos in I think it was Jackalan or Galen, one of the two. He told us about our brother and our younger brother and younger sister being held captive in uh, this hideout here, so we should go and rescue them at some point. Um, but I just want to take a look again at Oxhall because I've forgotten what exactly was available. That's right, I think we had everything except um, dates for the, uh, for the food variety bonus. So that's okay. And we wanted to upgrade our troops a bit by fighting bandits and looters and whatnot. I'll have a look at Praven. So expensive a date fruit. Pretty much not worth getting dates unless you actually go into uh, Asurai territory and buy dates there. You can see our stewardship stewardship skill is um, going up quite quickly on account of having a bunch of different types of food. There we go, that's a good party of looters. We'll catch them pretty easily. We'll attack these guys. And we will try to get our... I guess our infantrymen to, to attack them, because I, I really want our infantry to be upgraded. I'll get to go for some Couch Lance goodness here. Nice. Nice. Cool, cool, cool. Let's switch to our mace. I want to give this a crack. Yeah, it's not too bad. Oh, crap. Our horse got speared. Let's switch to our sword. Oh, okay, well that didn't work out too well. We got completely... We probably got our head sliced off with the uh, scythe that that guy was using. Anyway, won the battle, and we're the only one who got knocked out. So be it. But at least we get to upgrade our troops a bit. Um, I'm just trying to consider if I want to go down the swordsman or billman line. They've got shield, they've got mace, shield, and spear. Whereas these guys, short bill, ridge tipped arming sword. I don't know. 130 two handed, 130 pole arm, 130 pole arm, 130 two handed, 130 one handed, 130 pole arm. I mean, they're not really that. All that different. They all have the same wage. I don't think we have any billmen yet. Um, so I guess we'll go billmen for those ones. And we're going to keep upgrading all the infantry into, you know, more infantry. I don't think we need any more cavalry. And ideally, honestly, we would be getting the noble line of cavalry rather than the um, recruit line of cavalry. So, but, you know, that's okay. Alright, go after these guys. If we can catch.
catch them. Should be able to. And we'll have to just send our troops to fight them. And again, we'll go Billman. We'll drop off the prisoners at Galen. Toki the Knowing, we don't need him. We can get another recruit. We can sell a bunch of that gear. That's a good price for, for the Sumter horses. We'll hang on to them for now. Alright. Let's see what quests these villagers have. Alliston needs tools. Let's speak to him. Hi, sorry, I don't think I know you. My name is Arthur, sir. May I ask your name? I'm Inric. I've lived all of my life here, working the land, as do my kin. A lot of the people here in Alliston. Yeah, that's, we've read this dialogue before. Um, I've heard of you. At last we meet. You sound like a good man to know. Let us speak together from time to time. Ah, oh, so our reputation's getting around. I heard you may need some help with a problem. We do have some problems. A sickness passed through here last month. Praise the heavens, only a few people died. But many were weakened and we couldn't get much work done. Now we need to hire some laborers from nearby settlements to make up for the shortfall. But we don't have the tools for them. We're in a bit of a rush. Do you think you could find tools for us? We need one tools in 15 days. The village is short on dinars, so we can make the payment in kind with 16 barrels of olives. What do you say? Um, if so, you'll need a man with a good understanding of trade. And you'll need at least three fighting men. Your companion will need 140. All right, well, we'll do this ourselves. Um, excellent, but please hurry. We need to put the men we hired to work right away. Good luck. All right, so they just need one thing of tools. I'm sure we can find some tools at the, uh, the city here. This one will fight in person because it's against two bands, and there's a few of them. Uh, we'll put our archers here. We'll put our infantry here. We'll just put our cavalry on the flank here. Oops. Really, we can better better arrange them. Oops. The rest all looks fine to me. We'll put the cavalry a bit further back, and we'll go and see if we can couch. Couch lance some of their cavalry. If they're coming, uh, no, uh, I want to fight them on the open field here. Yeah, here we go. He's on his way. Oh, <laughs> we just missed, and then I think our horse hit them. And so when we're behind them, couch lance won't be that effective. We'll have to thrust. One of them died? Yeah, he already got killed by our crossbowmen. It's a bit dark. Okay, we got him. You can actually leave the combat area and then you, you'll retreat, but I think you lose some of your troops or you just lose the battle. Can't remember exactly how that works. Okay. I think we can... I think we can get everyone to charge, maybe. Try to get our riding skill up to 90. Writings at 90. I think the next perk threshold is uh, is 100, though. Right. Come on. There we go. I got it. 
Cool. So we won the battle, we didn't lose any men. 5.3 renown there, which is good, and a decent amount of morale, and quite a good bit of experience for our troops as well there. Which is great. So we don't have any more Vlandian recruits, which is perfect. Um, we will go one more billman, two more swordsmen. And then we go, we've got some Vlandian sergeants. And some more spearmen. Ah, now, I think we'll go pikemen for that one. Leadership skill went up. Okay, and we should actually be able to recruit... Oh no, I thought we would be able to recruit more, but I guess not. That's okay. We'll go to Jakulan. Trade off the prisoners and trade off the loot that we don't need. Including the harness. We'll sell the battalion pony. That all looks fine. And we need tools, wasn't it? 120. That's expensive. We can get them cheaper at Galand for 60. So to Galand we'll go. And we will speak to Honeytongue Satil's associate. Uh, sorry, we'll speak to Honeytongue Satil because her associates have been captured by bounty hunters. Welcome, stranger, to my little kingdom here. Who might you be? My name is Arthur, madam. May I ask your name? I'm Satil. There's some who know me as Honeytongue Satil. That's a term of respect, by the way. I've heard of you. At last we meet. You sound like a good man to know. Let's speak together. Yep. Okay. I heard you may need some help with a problem. Some of my lads have gone missing. I've got a witness who says they've gotten themselves dead drunk drinking with another band in these parts who turned out to be filthy bounty hunters. Now my boys are all trussed up and these treacherous animals aim to turn them in for the bounty. Well, how can I help you? Raid the bounty hunters, hide out and rescue my associates from them. I will make it worth your while, say 3,000 dinars. Is there any other way? Maybe one of your men who knows a thing or two about scouting with 10 good men can deal with these scum. So what do you say? All right, well, I can do the job. That's the spirit. My men will tell you how to find the hideout. Rescue those poor captives and a large sack of silver will be on your way. Great. Okay. Um, scouts working for Honey Tonks Atil marked the hideout on your map. Did they? Is it this hideout? It must be. This is the same hideout that our brother is in. Is there a marker on the map? No. Doesn't look like it. I thought you know, there might have been an arrow pointing the way. So uh, it, it must be this hideout then. Uh, and presumably that's what. Yeah, that's why there's that quest marker there. Although I can't. Was that there before? I can't remember. Anyway, we've got 14 days to get the tools and 29 days to do that. So we'll go and get the tools first from Galand. And then we'll go and hand those in and then clear that hideout. Um, we'll talk to him too, because it looks like he's got a quest. First, let's get those tools. Yeah, 65. Nice. We only needed one. It was only one, right, was it? One, yeah, one unit of tools. Clever Ulpo, betting fraud. Yeah, you want something from me? Who are you? All right, we're gonna take a little harsher approach with him. They know me as Arthur, mark it down. You shall be hearing of me a lot. Well, I'm Ulpo, ask around about me. You'll be told I keep the peace in the back alleys. Yeah, I know your name. I've got nothing against you, friend. Stay out of my business and I'll stay out of yours. Well, I heard you may need some help with a problem. Yes, I'm glad to have the chance to talk to you. I've been thinking for a while about how you and I might work together. Interested? What kind of partnership are we talking about? Well, you've made quite a name for yourself as a warrior. You may not know this, but I keep an eye on the careers of champions like yourself for professional reasons. I follow tournaments, you see, and I like to both place and take bets. But of course, I need someone who can not only win those tournaments, but lose if necessary, if you understand what I mean. Not all the time, that would be too obvious. Here's what I propose. We enter into a partnership for five tournaments. Don't bother memorizing which ones you win and which ones you lose. Before each fight, an associate of 
of mine will let you know how you should place. Follow my instructions and I promise you will be rewarded handsomely. What do you say? Well, no, I'm not going to do that. That's far too dishonorable for our character. But I guess that's what you come to expect working with the, uh, the gang leaders in cities. <laughs> so we're not going to bother with that. Um, okay, all right, we'll go and hand in those tools then. And I want to try to do a few more quests around this area because if, if we are eventually going to get land in Vlandia, I sort of want it to be closer to the borders and not up here. Although I would take, like if I, if I could take my pick of any town in Vlandia, I would either pick Sargat or Praven, um, just because I like those towns the most. Um, all right, let's speak to uh, Inric of Alistan and we'll, we'll visit the village proper so we can show off some more of the scenes. So this is the village, as you can see in a, it's in, in the forest here. Oops, rode right into the cart there. Yeah, very, very wooded village. But you can explore everything, you can't pick up items or steal anything. Oh, some of the buildings you can't go into and everything, so... It's a bit unfortunate, but... Mountain Blade's cool, but it's not as, like, the scenes aren't as developed as in other RPGs. Like, that's not really what the game is about. Um, Alright, where is this Inric guy? There he is, Inric. That's our companion. There he is. Inric, I have your tools, my good man. Presumably they are for this rural notable notary as well. Who's this guy? So it seems as though the Batanians have had enough of war. Good, peace is good. Oh, I guess I guess we're not at um, war with Batania anymore, or at least Vlandia is not. Anyone. Okay, Inric of Alliston. Arthur, it's been a while. Yeah, thanks again for agreeing to handle that matter for me. About that task you gave me, I brought your tools. Cool, so relation increases, uh, increased by seven to a total of six. Um, and our relations with some of the other people in the village also increased, and we got a bunch of charm skill and some olives in exchange. Thank you again for all your help. Until next time. Alright, well, we'll leave now. We shall leave the village. You can also leave the village by just riding to the boundary, I think, but it's much faster to hit tab. Um, okay, and I guess we'll do this hideout now, I suppose. We'll have to wait until... Oh, actually, oh, never mind. I was going to look at my character sheet. Radagos, he says, you finally arrived. I have a few things to say before we attack. We have to be clever. Galter is a cunning fellow in a low and base kind of way. I, I'm going to say, I defeated you before. I know how your gang operates. Less talking, more raiding. Come on. That you did, that you did. Lead on then. Alright. So passing by the slopes of the mountains, you see an outcrop crowned with the ruins of an ancient fortress. You see armed men moving about. As you listen quietly, you hear scraps of conversation about raids, ransoms, and the best places to waylay travelers. Alright, we're going to just quickly look at our character sheet first. And we can pick a charm perk we can get self promoter will gain plus five influence by winning a tournament and we get plus one morale while in a besieged settlement or we can get virile we're 30 percent more likely to have children and if we're the governor we get 10 percent chance to get plus one relation with a random notable in governed settlement per day while town projects are active continuous town projects um i don't think it's that difficult to have children so we'll I think we'll go for self-promoter, given that one, it gives a party leader bonus, not a governor bonus for the second perk, uh, or the second component of the perk. And two, uh, we're doing a lot of tournaments, so getting the extra influence is nice. So we'll get self-promoter. Cool. All right. Um, and we will equip, instead of our lance, we will equip our, our crossbow and our... Um, bolts make sure those are locked so we'll go into battle now with the sword and with our crossbow and bolts because a lance is not going to be very useful to us um, on foot um, I'm just actually I'm wondering should we go for the blunt damage instead of the cut damage I think we'll be all right with the cut damage depends how heavily armored I guess these bandits are they shouldn't be that heavily armored 
So we'll wait for Nightfall to ambush. Well, having said that, the final, if there's a final boss, like, actually, hang on, we should heal up. We're only at 39 hit points, I just noticed. We'll do a bit more, um, um, I guess we can either wait in town and get another recruit as well, actually. We can wait in town and that'll heal us a little bit faster. We'll do that, I think. We'll just wait in town. And then once we're at like 80% or so, we'll go and um, go and attack that hideout. And hopefully that's the one where this quest is as well. I, I think it is. Because there's two quest icons there. Uh, did we get another... Oh, a stewardship skill. Nice. So we can get either Drill Sergeant or Seven Veterans. So both are a Quartermaster and then a Governor perk. So it's really only the Quartermaster perk that we need to concern ourselves with. So we can get Tier 4 plus Troops Gain 4 Daily XP or All Troops Gain 2. I think we'll just go with All Troops Gain 2. Seems like a better option to me. And if we ever are a Governor, I guess our Garrison will have lower wages. 72% health now. Let's just wait a little bit more. Pretty decent party morale. Another two points in steward. Tons of bandits running around. Ah, oh, and there's an arena run in town, so we'll join the arena. There's two lords here, so segmented servilier over padded cloth <laughs> is the um, is the prize, which is a helmet. Let's place a bet. Um, we've got a bill hook. Uh, just mistimed that a bit. Oh no, I totally got the range wrong on that. We might actually get knocked out here if, if our buddies don't help us. Okay. Ooh, he got us pretty good there, actually. Okay, we got him. Oh, how did you not die from that? Alright, we'll definitely get through to the next round now. Um, even if we, uh, even if we die here. Because we got enough kills. Given we killed three out of four, this might be four out of four. Don't get in my way when I'm swinging. I'm in the middle of my backswing. And yes, that is a Stargate SG-1 reference. If anyone is familiar with the show. It's a line from Colonel Jack O'Neill, played by Richard Dean Anderson, who is the same guy who played MacGyver. For any oldies out there, that was an easy round. I never actually watched MacGyver, but I have seen all of Stargate. Good show. They kind of didn't do much with the franchise, or the IP though, sorry, um, after Atlantis. Atlantis was like the last. Atlantis was the last good one. I think that, what did they do after that? They did Universe. I couldn't really get into Universe, to be honest. But Atlantis was good and SG-1 was good. There was a, a noticeable depreciation in the quality of SG-1 though after season... Probably uh, beginning season 5. Whenever they introduced that lady who was um, uh, Barbie... She got the name Barbie Tokra or Tokra Barbie or something like that. <laughs> and they also started getting more into like galactic geopolitics and less into like just you know the adventure aspect of the show that's kind of to be expected i suppose but they had more episodes dedicated towards the overarching kind of earth expanding its presence in the galaxy and less episodes dedicated to the hey we're just having a fun adventure on a different planet and there's some weird aliens or some weird stuff going on still a good show though i do recommend it all right we've won that tournament um, I'm just gonna sell, I'm gonna sell this, keep the money, keep the money, because our troops are getting a bit expensive now, so, 
We do need the cash. Almost at 100% health. And conveniently, it'll be night time or close to it. Okay, so let's go and attack the hideout. Hopefully, we can get there before daytime. Yep, great. Okay, let's attack. We will take with us. I guess all of the Blandian sharpshooters, that does make the most sense. And we have to take Radigos with us. So you can only take 10 people on hideout battles, and you get to pick which 10 you take. Um, I think, yeah, we'll, we'll just take the, the crossbowman. Our best crossbowman. It makes the most sense. Because there's, there's only 12 raiders, so it's not a big deal. And I'll get as much crossbow experience as I can here. Try not to miss, or oh, I need to tell my guys they can fire at will as well. Cool, alright, great. Reload our next one. We don't have a lot of crossbow bolts, so we do have to be... Why are my guys all spread out like that? Can I get them to stand closer? Oh, it's because I'm ordering two different command groups because Radagos is considered infantry and the others are considered archers so they never stack up in formation too close together. What are they shooting at? Oh, they're actually shooting at these guys. I think. Yeah. He moved. And something actually blocked that shot. Got him. We'll actually be able to get a perk with our crossbow after this. Because we're, we hit 25 skill. So that's good. We'll move our guys up to here. They can chill at this camp. Also, note that the layout of this bandit camp does not at all match the description of the hideout. Alright, I need to be careful. This guy's got a... Uh, In fact, let's. Oh crap! Let's keep my shield out. I think. Oh, missed him entirely there. There we go. Got him. That's the first kill we've gotten with Ambassador. Our uh, sword we won from that tournament a while ago. Oh, that was terrible. I'm going to tell my troops to hold fire because I want to get the crossbow hits on this guy. Come on, run straight at me, mate. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Can zoom in a bit if we want. Ooh, headshot. Very nice. Okay, move our guys up. We've got five more raiders to deal with. And we've got three crossbow bolts left. So we'll just move our guys up to maybe here and then or there and we'll just tell them to open fire. Let's see if we can hit this guy. Yeah, that was a good hit. 90 damage, very good. Perfect. Tell our guys to open fire. Great. Okay, these two guys will die. Cool, we got him. Nice. We're actually very close to a one-handed. Um, where's the last guy? Tell them to charge. The AI always knows where the last guy is, so telling them to charge. We'll flush him out. I think he's back there. Tell them to hold fire. I'll tell them to stand here. I'll kill him. Might level up our one-handed skill a bit more. Actually, we'll tell them to charge. This guy's got throwing weapons. Actually, they should stay back because he'll throw them. I don't want any of our guys to die to throwing spears. Okay, he missed. Okay, we got him. 
Uh, shield is at half strength, so we do have to be mindful of that. This must be Galta. Bastards! You're the kin of my captives, right? I saw Radagos with you. You know he can't be trusted. That was probably more of a question than the way I said it, but whatever. He led us here. Where are my brothers and my sister? Nah, there's no more talking. Kill me or I kill you. That's how this ends. I'll do you the honor of dueling you, and my men will stand down if you win. Yeah, alright, very well. I'll duel. Ooh, that's a big sword. And he goes down. Very good. And we got 75 one-handed, which is great. Unfortunately, we cannot kill these guys. But we won! We get 2.5 renown, 1.7 morale, and all of the loot. Very good. We can take some prisoners. We plundered some gold. Uh, and we get a bunch of loot here, none of which is particularly useful. Some of them would have been decent upgrades, actually. And our charm skill went up because we freed Honey Tongue Satil's associates, so we got 3,000 gold and increased relation by 5 to a total of 6. And because we cleared the hideout, we also got two relation with nearby notables, and completing the quest increased our charm skill. All right, Galter is obviously not dead. He says, look, we can still talk. I'll give you a pouch of silver. You said talking was a waste of time. You are Radagos' property now. Okay, and, and uh, <laughs> Radagos decides to execute Galter. Fair enough. And Nogand, he says, Arthur, I knew you'd come. Great heaven. Damn, brother. Nothing can stop you. I love you, brother. So glad to see you are safe. Is everyone okay? Yes, we are all fine. Elder and Varric are scared, but fine. We need to be quick and get the hell out of this place. I'll take Elder and Varric to Jacqueline immediately. They will be safe there. Meet me there later when you're ready to tell me everything. Okay, brother, be careful. Take care. As you leave the hideout, Radagos comes to you and asks to talk. Well, looks like we've gotten your kin back to you. So my end of our deal is complete. I'll be making myself scarce now. Don't let your conscience bother you about letting me go, by the way. I won't get back into slaving. Burn too many bridges with my old colleagues, you might say. I'll find some other way to earn my keep. Mercenary work, perhaps. Anyway, maybe our paths will cross again. Uh, yeah, not gonna happen, mate. Your men killed my parents. Did you really think you would not be punished? Eh, well, I dared to hope, I suppose. All right, then, I'm not gonna grovel to you, so get it over with. Yeah, I shall. For your many crimes, Radagos, your life is forfeit. On the sixth day of winter, 1085, Radagos has been executed. Killed our parents, so, you know, got what he deserved. Okay, uh, we completed the quest to rescue our family, saving our brothers and sisters, and we can now go and meet up with them in Jacqueline. We've got some perks and we leveled up, evidently. I didn't even notice that. So we can, uh, we can allocate another attribute point. We'll put one into maybe steward. Um, yeah, we'll put one point into intelligence and then we'll get for the focus point. I don't know where I want to put it. Maybe leadership, maybe charm, I don't know. Maybe athletics even, or riding. What do we need from riding? Mounted melee damage. I do want to max out riding and pole on, but we're, we're not even close to hitting the learning limit for any of those. So I guess we'll put it into Well, we're going to focus on doing some quests and doing mercenary stuff, so maybe we'll drop it into maybe charm. Charm's always good. Charm or leadership. And we've got quite a bit of attribute points in these, so I think we don't really need to drop too many focus points into them. Crossbow I'm not too worried about, so we'll, yeah, we'll drop it into charm. Next focus point maybe leadership and then we'll start putting more up the top here. 
see how we go with scouting medicine and steward. If we start hitting up against the limit for steward, then we'll bump it up. Uh, actually, maybe we'll, maybe we'll do that. We'll put an intelligence point into steward, and we'll put the focus point into steward because. Mm. Yeah, no, actually, we won't do that. I've changed my mind again. We'll just do we'll just do this, and for the one-handed perk, we'll go. We can either get cavalry or shield bearer. Reduces the effect of wielding a shield on your combat movement speed. Infantry troops have increased movement speed. Or we can get your one-handed weapon damage is increased by 5% while mounted. Cavalry troops in the formation you're leading have their melee damage increased by 5%. We'll definitely go for cavalry. We're going to be a knight, so it makes the most sense. And for crossbow, we can get aiming with your crossbows 25% faster. And ranged troops have 10% more morale at the beginning of a battle. Or we can get... Crossbow attacks ignore armors below 20, and ranged troops are 20% cheaper to recruit. Well, I'm not really worried about any troops that have, uh, you know, like I'm not going to be using a crossbow very much, so this isn't that useful, and this isn't that useful, and I'm certainly not worried about troops that have armors below 20. Um, so I think we'll just go with marksmen. make our ranged troops a bit better at the beginning of battles seems like a good good thing to do um, all right go to Jacqueline and we'll speak to honey tongues Attilde. Arthur it's been a while keeping busy I assume that task you took on for me very nicely done all right okay so she doesn't have anything else to say which is fine we'll ransom our prisoners and we'll visit the tavern and we'll speak to our brother who's here somewhere. There he is. Again. Brother! So then, what is it? Um, would you like, would you care to pass the time with a game of Mutoriri? No, I don't think we'll do that. Um, about your position in the clan? No, that's something I'd like to discuss. Yeah, we want him to join our party. But let's pass the, let's, let's play a friendly game of Mutariri with our uh, with our brother. Mm, I suppose takes my mind off all these problems I have to deal with. All right, let's begin. How do we begin? <laughs> my, maybe that's broken. Do we have to do we have to sit near the game board? Maybe that might be broken. Let me know how much of a challenge you can stand, and we'll get started. I'm ready to offer you a hard challenge and friendly game. What exactly is Mutariri? Mutariri is a game of anticipation, with no possibility of capturing. All your effort should be on reading your opponent and planning further ahead than him. That sounds fun. Um, can I change the difficulty? Yes, how easy should I make things for you? Make them very easy, because I'm still learning. Let me know how much of a challenge you can stand and we'll get started. I'm ready to offer you an easy challenge in a friendly game. Can I change the amount we're betting? Unfortunately, I only allow betting when I'm playing my best. You'll have to up the difficulty. Yeah, okay, that's fine. All right, let's... We'll play one game. I guess we can't play our brother. And uh, I'll be white, I suppose. Let's begin. All right, I have no idea how to play. So you can only move a pawn... You can only move a pawn that has an opposing pawn next to it. To the center tile. Every pawn can freely be moved one tile along the outer edge. A pawn on the center tile can move to any available tile. Player wins if his opponent has blocked, has been blocked, and can no longer make any moves. Okay. Alright, so we have to go first, I guess. And then we want to we can't capture and we can't move anything else so we've only got one move which is to go here oh you can we can make multiple moves is it no we can only make one move um all right uh if we go here he can go there we can go here. That doesn't get us anywhere. 
I don't think, that line. Whereas, if we go here, he can only go here. We'll try this. And then we'll go there. He'll go there and then we can move like that. No, that didn't work. Um, like that. Do we win? Oh no, we lost. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Weird game. Alright, let's let's uh let's try again. I'll play white again. Um let's see if I can understand this how this game works. Okay, we can so we can't move these two, we can only move one of these. So move this one. Okay. And then we'll go here. Okay, he's moved there, now we'll go here. And now we'll go here. And now, if we go here, I think we can still do that. Yeah. And then this, does that work? No, because he can move. All right, and then we have to go back there. If we go here, and then here, does that do anything? No. I'm obviously not very good at the planning aspect of this. How, I'm, I don't know how to, how do I get it such that he can't make any moves? If we go here? No, okay, that lost us the game again. I wish it would stay on the beaten board so I know what the beaten the board looks like when we lose and can't do anything um <clears throat> alright we'll try this okay we can only make one move try that Okay, I think we win if we move here. Or can he just go across and then we lose? I don't know. I'm not sure how this works. Okay, so he could just go across. So if we go here, but then anyone can just move to the center. And then I'll be trapped, potentially. Oh, I've only got one move and then he moves there and then what? Nothing. So if I go back here, these two are trapped. But then this one can just move there. So I need to go here so that this one moves. I have no idea. Try that, because I think if we move out that work? No. How could he do that? Oh, because I'm connecting. Alright, well that's, that's gotten us back to where we were before. You can just move there. I can move there. I have no idea how to get this into a win state. <laughs> If I move here, he can't move there, he can't move there, he'll have to move there, which he can do, then, then what, then I move there, we're back where we were before. So how do I get out of this position, what about that one? Okay, I don't think that helped. Okay, we lost again. I, I do not understand this game. Let's keep trying to play as white. One more. You can only move... You can only move a pawn that has an opposing pawn next to it. To the center tile. Every pawn can freely be moved one tile along. 
Oh, 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 okay. Alright, I don't know if that changes anything, though. But I thought pawns could only move if they had. Um, so he could move... He could move this pawn here or here, but he can't move this pawn here or this pawn here, if that was empty, which it isn't. But So we can't move anything except this one there, so that's what we have to do. And now we can't, again, move anything, so we've got to move this one there. And then we can put this here, and then he can move that there, can't he? Because any pawn can freely move to the outer... Can, can move around the circle, right? But only a pawn with a, like next to a different colored pawn can move to the center. So he can move this to the center, this to the center, this to the center, or this to the center. So I need to trap him with me having, him having three pieces trapped as in two of my pawn, like one pawn here, then three of his pieces, then another of my pawns there, and then one of my pawns in the center. So if I move this here, he goes here, then I move this here, and we win. Yeah, okay, all right, I get it now. Okay, all right, let's change the difficulty to hard and I don't know what difference that would make, really, but we'll play again. A friendly game. Alright, and now we'll go... Okay, he's here, and then he'll have to go... Oh, yeah, okay. He didn't have to do that, actually. So now I've only got one move, which is to go there. And he's trapped me, the bastard. And again, I've only got one move, which is to go here. Okay, and now I can go here, and then he'll have to go here or here. Wait, what's the best move here? If I go here, then he can move there. Is that the best move? Or should I... Because he, he's not going to want to... I'll have to try force him to move over there, maybe. Just trying to think the best way to do that. Because if I go here, he goes back into the middle. Can I do that? Ah, oh, see, he didn't do that. He, he's being a bit of a... Not doing what I want. I'll have to go there. He has to go there. And then I'll have to go... Here. But then he's just going to move into the middle again. This doesn't actually help us. I don't think. He has to move out there. Alright, and then... There's one move here, which is... Oh no, we can't move that to the center. So we've got to go here. And then... There? No. I think that, that just mucked it. God damn it. Um, if I go here, he goes there. I'll try that. It's confusing. This is a confusing game. Uh, I think he might have just beaten us. Yeah. So there's like one end state. By the looks of it. I don't think it matters which pawn we start with. He goes there. If I go back here and he goes back there, we're back to square one. So I have to go here, I suppose. And then...
There, okay, yeah, alright. I think I get it now. Let's try to do it again. Because there's only one thing he can do, right? I guess that. And then... And then that. Yeah, okay. Alright. I get it. <laughs> we're we're going to leave now, though. That was an uh, interesting enough game, I suppose. Um, not as good as just regular chess. We couldn't play it with our brother, but we'll just pretend we were playing with our brother. Oh, and we want to ask him to join our party. Brother, I want you to join my party. I'll be honored to see you outside. Great. Let's leave the tavern. And um, I don't know where... Actually, if we go to the keep... No, we can't enter the keep. <laughs> Fair enough. I'm not sure where our um, brother and sister are, but I assume... I assume they're in the uh, in the keep. We're a minor faction, technically. So yeah, those are our parents who died. This is our younger brother and our youngest sister. Varric is in Jakulan. He must be in the keep. Elder is also in Jakulan. Again, must be in the keep. Fair enough. All right. So our brother is now in our party. Here he is. He's very decked out with very high skills and very good stats. Um, and I think we're gonna use him, he's, he's particularly good with stewardship. Um, so we need to decide what function we want him to perform. I think we'll make him kind of like us, you know, a, a knight on horseback, um, but we'll make him very good with stewardship. So we're gonna bump up his, cause he's gonna be our quartermaster, I think. So we'll bump up his learning rate on polearm, on riding, on one-handed. And the last one, I guess we'll bump it up on... Eventually we could make him a leader of his own party, but I think we're better off keeping him as our steward, as our quartermaster. So I guess we will... In two minds. Because smithing would be quite useful to just bump up if we ever go down the smithing track. So maybe we'll just do that. For his stats, um, I guess we'll pick, put some points into intellect. We need to figure out what, what uh, quartermaster perks above this amount we actually want. In fact, we should probably do that first. Maybe we should just allocate all his perks before we even touch the skill points and attribute points. All right, so if he's our quartermaster, then he won't get the party leader perks, so those are irrelevant. But this frugal's better anyway, so we'll pick frugal. And then drill sergeant or seven veterans. Again, drill sergeant's better in my opinion. And we can reduce food consumption while in an army by 10% and decrease garrison wages for castles. Or we can get workshops owned by you have 20% increased production and siege engines are built 20% faster. I mean, the siege engine one isn't bad, but the workshop is useless. But then again, the, the governor one's also useless. So food consumption, I'm not too worried about food consumption, to be honest. Um, Food's not really a problem. So, particularly when you're in late game and you're in an army. So I guess we'll go quarter with this one, sweatshops, to get the faster siege engines. And we can get efficient campaign or paid on promise. During village... Okay, well, he's not a party leader, so those don't matter. But anyway, during village raids, you gain an additional food item. Troop wages are decreased by 25% while in an army. Or we can get 
Aiden Promise companion wages and recruitment fees are reduced by 25% and discarded armors can be donated for increased experience. I think this one's better because you can invite, if you, if you use your clan members to form their own parties and then invite them in an army, it doesn't, it doesn't cost any influence to put your own clan members in an army. So you can pretty much always be in an army and therefore always have a 25% wage reduction. Um, whereas discarding armors, like sell them. You can always buy troops and, you know, train your troops up. So we'll go with efficient campaigner. Okay, we can get giving hands, discarded weapons, tariff income is higher. Um, or logistician, increased party morale by plus four if number of mounts is greater than non-cavalry troops. Oh, that's a nice morale bonus. And again, I don't really plan on just throwing weapons out. It's wasteful. We can sell them. So, yeah, I guess we'll take Logistician. The last one, do not pay wages for wounded soldiers. Or influence gain from donating troops is increased by 25%. I think we'll go Aid Corps. Again... There's many other ways to get influence. You don't have to donate troops, so I don't see a situation in which I would actually do that. So yeah, we'll get eight core. All right, I'm just gonna accept those changes because otherwise it can get it, because if you hit reset, then it resets all the perks and it can get a bit annoying. All right, um, then we'll go riding. So we're gonna make him Increase your maneuvering, mounted troops, or increase your charge damage. We'll go maneuvering. Pass the chance of your mount becoming lame or dead. Increases your... Again, we'll go... I think we'll go well strapped. Even though one of them is a party leader bonus. Like, the, the hit points for his own mount is useful as well. Increase it. Okay, so party leader or party leader captain. Well, I think for this one we go for nomadic traditions because he'll probably be a captain in our formation, one of our captain of one of our formations at some point. Uh, and we can get Sagittarius or Sagittarius, sorry, um, decreases accuracy penalty by 15% while you're mounted, and then it'll do the same for the troops in its formation. Or we can get this one, which is a party leader perk completely. So we'll go for Sagittarius, I suppose. Even though he won't be won't be doing anything with um, mounted troops, I don't think. Okay, increases your damage to problems by two percent while on foot. Well, again, he'll probably lead our cavalry formation, so we'll give him cavalry. Damage increase, store pull on thrust, attacks ignore, 25%. Well, again, he's going to be a captain, not a governor, so we'll give him braced, even though it applies to infantry. Um, the dismount one's useful still for cavalry. Okay, we can get increases your swing speed with pole arms by 5%. Infantry troops have their swing speed increased or clean thrust. Again, most of the lances are all thrust weapons, not swing, so we'll go for clean thrust. Increases your combat movement speed with pole arms by 2%. Infantry troops in the formation have their movement speed buffed, or we can get pole arms that can knock down. And then infantry troops in the party you are leading. Hmm. Pole arms that can knock down, ignore 15% knockdown resistance. It's just for him though. I'd rather get this because at least we have the option of using him to lead infantry if we want. Okay, Lancer or Steed Killer. Lancer increases your speed damage bonus with pole arms by 20% while mounted, and troops in the formation you're leading have their damage speed bonus with pole arms increased by 20%. Well, that's very useful, I think. This one increases your damage to pole arms by 70% against mounts, but again, that's just for him. And then infantry troops in the formation you're leading have their damage. Okay, well, we'll go for this one, because this buffs all troops, including cavalry. 
so that's more useful. Um, when you hit an enemy in the head with a polearm, you deal 50% more damage, and the experience gain of garrison cavalry and governed settlements is increased by 20%. Or well, we can get your couch lance now has a 30% chance to stay couched after it kills someone, and governed settlements gain plus one security per day. Well, we'll get skewer. I think that's the better um, the better perk here. Okay, accept all of those changes. Um, tactics. We'll we'll leave the less the rest of them for now. I think we can buff them later. I'll maybe I'll do them in between videos or something. Maybe not. Sometimes it's useful for viewers to see what I'm changing and tell me why I'm wrong. <laughs> Sell all of that. Oh, we should buy him some armor at least. I don't know what weapons we want to give him yet, so we'll just leave him with those, but armor at the very least we should get him, so we'll get him a padded cap. We'll get him the hood. Make him look a bit more Vlandian rather than so nomadic. Get him an Akaton. Padded band braces and leather cavalier boots. Actually, his wrapped leather boots are better, so we'll leave him with the wrapped leather boots. We'll get him the male cavalier boots. He is our brother, after all. We should look after him. All right, that'll do for now. As for horses, we can give him a. We can actually give him the Hasawi, but we won't do that. We'll give him a step horse. Or should we buy him? I oh, will get him a Vlandian Corsa, like us, and we'll get him the light saddle as well. So he has, his horse has some proper armor at least. Uh, and you know, we'll, we will get him a lance, light lance. So at least he's got a proper pole on, on his uh, horse there. Okay, that'll do. Cool. We're going to keep ourselves as the quartermaster for a bit longer so that we're getting the um, stewardship experience. But um, for now, I think we'll, uh, we'll, perhaps, uh, we'll perhaps leave it there and pick this up in the next episode. So I'll catch you then. Thanks for joining me.